Hello and welcome to today's edition of Ask the Expert. We're here at the Youth America Grand Prix semifinals in Osaka, Japan, and we're fortunate to have with us as an adjudicator and a scholarship presenter, uh, Mr. Eldar Aliyev, who also is the um, artistic director of Marinsky Ballet Far East Stage in the city of Vladivostok. Now, the original company of Marinsky Ballet was obviously founded in St. Petersburg more than two centuries ago, and this new company in 9,000 9, kilometers uh, in the far east of Russia uh, has just opened four years ago, and we can talk uh, today about what it takes to join this extraordinary company that's doing amazing things. Thank you, Eldar, for joining us. Um, Thank you for having me here. And for those who don't know, tell us about this company. It's a very exciting company. It's a company of 100 dancers and uh, it's a part of the Marinsky Ballet with all its traditions and with all its legacy. And it was formed in 2016 and we started with about 40 dancers and three years later here we are. We're having about 100 dancers company and we have a repertoire of about 14 classical ballets. So um, very happy to be a part of the company. Now. This is kind of like a very unique chance for a dancer to be a part of this, you know, centuries-old tradition of Russian ballet represented by the Marinsky uh, Theater, but also to be a part of a 21st century dance company that includes very much, you know, this very much contemporary, contemporary re repertoire based and, and sort of focused and that tours all over the world. So how do you combine these two things, the centuries-old tradition with the 21st century sensibility that your company represents? The ballet is the life art form. So it cannot stay in uh, the same, let's say, with the same um, aspect or with the same uh, um, style of development. It should move as our life moves. So that's why, uh, yes, we do have some of the productions uh, exactly the same as Marinsky has, uh, such as Don Quixote, Giselle, Swan Lake. Uh, we have contemporary productions which was uh, created uh, by Ratmansky for the Marinsky Theater and we staged it in our company. But we also have uh, different versions of, of the old uh, immortal classics like uh, Corsair, Nutcracker and other productions uh, which are unique just for our company. That's why, yes, we are following the traditions of the company, but we are moving the company to the 21st century. Yeah. Now, the company is very international from, where, from what I understand. So that's also a departure from a traditional Russian ballet company. I think something like 30% of your company is uh, international dancers, non-Russian dancers? You or take, yes, about that. Uh, that's about right. Yes, we do have dancers from all over the world. And uh, by the way, the Marinsky, the main stage of the Marinsky also has dance, foreign dancers. Now, it wouldn't be possible, let's say, at the Soviet time, but now it's possible. It's, it's becoming normal. And uh, uh, yes, we are looking for talents. When you say we're looking for talent, what exactly do you look for in a dancer? We are looking for talented, dedicated dancers who would be willing to join the company, work hard, uh, follow the traditions of uh, the Marinsky Theater, and uh, to become a part of our family, family of the Marinsky Ballet. Now, uh, are there certain physical characteristics that you're looking for in a dancer? Yes, the one is the most important, uh, most, most important thing is the aesthetics. Mm -hmm. We are looking for the let's say beautiful people on stage. It is first, the first impression the company makes when the curtain uh, raise, arises. So you, see, you, you have to, as, a, as an audience member, you have to see the beautiful people on stage to start with, with great proportions, with great uh, schooling, with, uh, with a great approach with the artistry on stage. So uh, that's what we're looking for to start with. So I think one thing that's important for dancers to understand in general is that when you say we're looking for beautiful people, but everybody's idea of beauty is different. So if, if you're not, you may be judged beautiful or representing the aesthetic of that particular company in one place, it doesn't mean that you wouldn't in another, right? Like it's very subjective, isn't it? Well, yes, I, I agree with you on that. Uh, but uh, saying beautiful people, meaning right proportions. So for you, beautiful means 
right proportions for right classical proportions. ballet. Of course, for classical ballet, of course you have to have 32 swans of the same height. You have to have 32 swans with the same proportions. You were not looking for the dancers with uh, short legs, let's say, with shorts or short arms, with big head. No, uh, mm -hmm. no, right away. So, but I mean, good proportions, meaning not necessarily tall, not necessarily short. There are roles for every height. Let's say. Uh, big swans are big swans, uh, they are taller than, sh than the little swans, mm -hmm. uh, and in every classical production you have taller dancers and shorter dancers, and we are following those traditions as well. So, yes, we do have tall dancers, yes, we do have short dancers as well. So, number one, uh, I guess how would you go about picking dancers for your company, or how would a dancer go about auditioning for you or being considered for by you? Twice a year we have auditioned one uh, in Moscow and in St. Petersburg. Uh, in St. Petersburg we normally have audition at the end of uh, April and uh, two weeks later we have audition in Moscow at Moscow Bolshoi Ballet Academy. So um, we do pre-selection. Based on the aesthetics? Based on the video. Uh -huh. Yes, we are requesting um, to send resume. Uh, and video of variations and video of about 10 minutes class mm -hmm. so uh, and then yes or no so we are inviting or rejecting the auditioner right? so first step you see the videos then those who pass the video audition get invited to a personal audition in Moscow or St. Petersburg that's correct and then if that you like the dancer then you invite them to join you in Vladivostok that's correct Got it. How does um, the touring schedule look for the company? Uh, twice a year we have uh, two weeks tours uh, to the Mariinsky, to St. Petersburg. We mm -hmm. have tours in um, uh, August mm -hmm. every year and we have tours in uh, January. Do you go outside of Russia? We do go outside of Russia. We were touring to uh, Korea, South Korea and Seoul. We took the company to China. Yes, we do. We start our international our international touring and um, developing it. What does the dancer contract look like? Do you engage the dancers for the full year? Is it a 52-week year contract, a 40-week contract? Yes. <laughs> In Russia, 52 weeks contract is pretty normal. Yes, mm -hmm. with all benefits. We even uh, pay them for uh, the rental of the apartment, partially wow. covering. I mean, it's up to the dancer what kind of apartment he is looking for. If he's looking for a luxury apartment, he has to pay uh, extra. But right. uh, we are paying the base cost of the apartment in some. Uh, in uh, Vladivostok, yes. So we have basic salary, we have extra perk for uh, extra money paying for the apartment, and based on the dancer's performer performance, dancers get paid for the performing every single role in the oh. production. So there are bonuses so on top on of that. Top of that. So and we're having about twelve performances, twelve ballet performances a month, with different titles. So it's a rare situation where people actually get paid decently well f for their profession. Exactly, but uh, yes, in Russia, ballet dancer is considered as a s serious profession. <laughs> yes. Right. So for international students, um, what would be your advice for uh, attracting your attention and getting into the company? What would you look for uh, for international dancers? What would be your advice? Submitting correct information. What does that mean? That means uh, the one page of resume, because students don't have long resume, just one page of resume which covers uh, height, picture, uh, education, uh, basic information, right? And then the video. Video must be submitted without uh, any uh, extra cloth on, on, on the dancer. I have to see the body. I have to see the approach that the dancer takes class. Five, eight minutes would be enough. So it's Batman Tandu, it's it is Fondu, Adagio, uh, turns, Allegro, small, medium, and one big jump would be fine. And then on the basis of that, you invite them for a personal audition. Right. So let's talk about artistry because uh, a lot of conversation in dance today centers around technique versus artistry. And, and people, you know, we hear a lot of people say, oh, of course it's all about artistry, but then they demand from the dancers extraordinary levels of technique. Uh, where does Marinsky Far East stage fall on that spectrum between artistry and technique? You have to keep the balance. 
of course, beautiful dancer, f fantastic, uh, with fantastic physical abilities, but with no technique, will not be able to do to to, to 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 make it. I mean, the dancer who does just technique and there is no artistic soul in that will not make it. So, of course, we are trying to do our best and to be responsible for the dancers who are offering contract and to work with them and to develop them by the way we want them to be. Um, and it works in the most cases. Yeah. What for you is artistry? Artistry, when the people in the audience are coming to see you, uh, I mean, when the people come to the theater and the curtain goes up and you forget about everything. You just live two hours or two and a half hours with us, live different life, forget about your problems, forget about uh, anything you have there behind in real life. That's, that's only artists that can bring you there. So basically whenever a dancer can make audience feel like that, that that's what that's true artistry, artistry. Yeah, exactly. is. And um, in terms of contemporary dance, where, um, in, in your company specifically, uh, what role does contemporary dance have in, in your company repertoire? So uh, in my mind, uh, the repertoire of the classical ballet company such as Mariinsky should uh, have like a f uh, shape of pyramid. So bass is the classical repertoire, unshakable. Mm -hmm. So middle part is the contemporary uh, works and the uh, top of the pyramid is the experimental modern works. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't work, for example, the new premiere, not really successful. Anyway, you have unshakable bass, which is classical ballet repertoire. So, and that includes that, those 10, 12 productions, which we all know, Swan Lake, Giselle, Sleeping Beauty, Corsair, Don Quixote, etc. So after that, you build that, and you build on top of that. The company is only five years old, four years old. So we are in pretty good shape of building classical repertoire. We, we practically have everything. So in terms of contemporary repertoire, we already have a couple of productions with contemporary repertoire, modern repertoire, we we'll start working on it. Now, you have been an artistic director of a company in America for many years uh, in Indianapolis. You've been an artistic director uh, of Russian companies. How would you compare the work process you know, for a, a dance artist in America and in Russia? I was fortunate enough to direct the company. In the, to start with, I was a principal dancer with the Kirov Ballet, with the Mariinsky Ballet for uh, all my artistic life. Then I moved to the States and I was directing the company uh, in Indianapolis for about 15 years. Then I had experience working as a ballet master all over the world and uh, with Boston Ballet. Uh, I was directing the National Ballet of Hungary. Uh, I was working in the um, Far East as well. And a year ago, uh, I'm back in Russia. I'm back to my alma mater, which is Mariinsky. And uh, uh, I, can, I can compare this, uh, this um, I mean, the work in, uh, in America and work in Russia. It's a completely different approach. So in America, there is no repertory theaters in existence. So you do productions per season. You do six, seven, eight productions per season. You do 10 Swan Lakes, forget about it. 10 Giselles, forget about it. 10 of those, 10 of the in the best case scenario, 10. But normally, in the mid-sized companies, five, six, otherwise you will not fill um, the house. In Russia, it doesn't work that way. So you have your repertoire, and you have 12 performances a month. I'm, I'm talking about our company uh, in Vladivostok. 12 performances a month of different titles. So the dancer just did first time Swan Lake, right? Something was good, something wasn't good, but the dancer has chance to repeat it next month and to improve and to start developing uh, himself as a, or herself as an artist, you know, and we're helping to the, I mean, uh, we are helping the dancer to develop his, his talent. Now, from your unique perspective of having directed uh, and worked with artists all over the world, what would be your number one advice to uh, dance students who are ready to become professional dancers? Uh, to be honest with themselves. And that honesty will help them to grow in profession. You know, so dancers should look at the mirror and to say, okay, 
here is my strength and here is my weakness and that weakness can be improved or if weakness cannot be improved it needs to be hidden so the artistry developing artistry will help to hide the problems to hide the weaknesses and to highlight strengths every single dancer have strengths and weaknesses but honesty of the dancer with himself will help better highlight strengths and hide weaknesses so that's that's great advice be honest with yourself and truly be with yourself look at yourself and exactly. work with what you've got and don't be afraid to say okay i don't have this but i have this i don't have that but i have this i do have this you understand yeah. so there is always a balance but for successful career you need three things talent hard work and luck today we've had the pleasure of speaking to eldar aliyev the artistic director of marinsky ballet far east stage i'm sergey gordeev and we'll see you again on ask the expert <laughs>